I, um, I had this visual as you were describing that situation with Jesus and how he was able to turn the heart of Zacchaeus to see his own reality rather than telling him, right? And just by the way that Jesus was being. And I really feel like for me, what comes alive time and time again is that in our being, we transfer something. We transfer something to those around us. And there's a, you know, when people are carrying baggage and when they're unhealed, that healing is the filter by which they treat others and see others and see situations. And so when we have the capacity to face ourselves and ask the hard questions and do the work and our healing begins from a healed place, then you can impart healing. And it's when you can see then the humanity and it's that verse that says that to who much is given, much is expected. And so for me, when I think about my journey and how God has healed me and the, and the intentionality I had to self towards self-growth, I see the healing that took place and, and how it transformed who I am and how I now perceive other people. Because of the brokenness that I was in, it gives me perspective for others' brokenness, right? I can sit with your brokenness and I can perceive it from that really um, desperate, difficult place that you might still be stuck in. And I can see that you are trying your best. And instead of unloading on you all this advice and things that you should be doing and things that you could be doing and things that I could be doing for you or with you, I just want to sit with you now. I just want to create space for you because when I found that the most powerful way to change anyone is just being the channel by which they can transform themselves. And, And what I mean by that is, let me sit with you and analyze or allow you to really communicate where you're at. You might just be in the midst of the pain. And so if you're talking to me from a ne- negative perspective, I'm not there to change your perspective. I'm not there to absorb your perspective. I'm just there to allow space for you to hear yourself. And I think when I step back, I found this with my dad works really well, is I step back and I just let him have it. I let him, I let him say whatever he wants to say. I don't disagree, but I don't agree either because I need to remain integral to myself. But creating the space does something magical. And so when I create the space, then I can also meet you time and time again. And as you're realizing, wait, there is no judgment and there is no condemnation. There is no trying to sell me something or trying to tell me to do this and that. Oh, there's something about that person that I'm I'm really liking. And now they can begin to say, well, how do I become that person? How do I be more like the way that you show up? How can I be in this state of peace? Like people often ask me, like, there's just such a peace about you. Like, how do you, how do you keep this peace all the time? It's like, I don't have to keep it. It's my intentionality to constantly be aware of what might be taking it away. Right. You got to keep a a, a vision on what is trying to steal my peace right? Like on the Saturday I had the event and I wasn't exactly in complete peace. So I quickly asked myself, what is it that's still in my peace? Oh, the fact that I was like, okay, I need to forgive. Let's forgive ourselves. Let's keep moving on. What's the next beautiful thing that's happening right now that I can appreciate and be grateful for? And Jesus did this and modeled this over and over again. And he was so good at allowing people to come to the realization of needing repentance or needing transformation. He never directly said that except for when we see it with the pharisees who lived in denial and i think there's a difference when you're intentionally living in denial like the pharisees who are just like i don't want to hear it i'm better than everybody else and that's when the ego is taking over and so i think that jesus was really directly speaking to the ego in them and the ego is that evil part of us that's trying to win and be all self-righteous but really it holds no substance and it's not sustainable because the ego will eventually kill you, right? And so I just, I love the parallels that you gave there. And I just really appreciate that when we come from a healed place, our ability to see people changes and people recognize that. People sense that. Like when I'm interacting with people now, people just know that even when I'm coming across a little sharp, they know I mean their best because they sense the the that essence by which I'm coming to them with. Like there's a loveliness about the essence of, I just want you to be better. I just want you to know that I care. And that is transferred through the emotion and the way that my body language is is coming across. And we know what it's like when you are conversating with um, a person who's angry, who's, um, 
you know, worked up, you, you know what it's like. You can feel it. You feel the atmosphere is charged. You feel their intensity. You want to take a step back. You want to move out of the, the way. And I, the same way you feel when someone's coming from a place of healing or compassion, authenticity, integrity, where they really value who you are and as you're presenting in front of them and genuinely wanting to be there and to create the space and to create the ability for you to be all that you want to be, even in the midst of your suffering. They want to just sit with you there. And I think it's beautiful and it's powerful and we can definitely um, follow Jesus's model. And um, I love how this conversation evolved from beginning to talk about where, what am I being and how my you know transformation of being and showing up in the world um, has been shaped over the last few years. Um, and then just seeing the interaction and seeing the transference that that creates within my relationships and different dynamics. And I love the um, examples you gave. I always appreciate the visuals and I think they really speak to a lot of people because they're real life situations that we find ourselves in, right? We're dealing with children. Maybe you don't have children, you're dealing with a spouse. Maybe you don't have a spouse, you're dealing with a colleague. Maybe you don't have a colleague because you work for yourself, but you're dealing with your customers. You gotta have, you know, you're gonna have some stakeholders, some customers, someone that you're coming across, or maybe just the clerk at the at the store when you go, you know, maybe Australia Post or whatever it is. But you're always coming into relationship with other people and how that relationship evolves is really important. And we are meant to be um, collaborating, right? It's, it's in our nature to be collaborating and to be cultivating relationships. They enrich our lives and research has shown that they actually help us live longer and a better quality of life. So I really appreciate the conversation that we've had. And I'm so grateful for the way that, you know, it evolves and uh, the nuance that it brings. Thank you.